Good morning and welcome to our devotions this morning. If you could see how many times I've tried to record this, uh, you would be amazed. There's just so much in this and, and I've got to keep it down to a few minutes. So we start our journey today on the road to Emmaus and it's in the scripture Luke 24, 13 to 35. And I'm not going to read it, but I would uh, suggest that you read it when you get some time. I read it in the New Living Translation, which is which is a great translation. Um, But there is one or two things that I want to highlight in this very packed piece of scripture um, that I hope will encourage you uh, today. So this story is a story of two disciples who are walking away from Jerusalem after Jesus, Jesus has been crucified and been put in the tomb. They've heard a rumour, an account that maybe uh, that the, the disciples have gone to the tomb and, and he isn't there. But they've they've left. They're on their way back to to where they they live. They are leaving it all behind. Um, they're walking away from what looks and feels like an absolute utter disaster. They have seen and heard and experienced so much that and so much negative stuff that has drained everything out of them. The Bible says that they are sad downcast so i can imagine that their shoulders are slumped and their pace slow and their demeanor like those who are carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders they're discussing the events as they walk along it there must have been more questions than answers what happens next i imagine when i get into try and get into their shoes i imagine that there are probably lots of sighs and thought-filled silences And I would imagine that at different times they would turn away from each other to wipe, surreptitiously wipe away the tears from their eyes. I feel their pain. I can recount events in my own life that have caused me to feel downcast and disheartened and discouraged and uncertain about what the future looks like and the mess that I'm leaving behind. Um, Even now, years later, when I talk about them, they still have the capacity to bring me to tears, even though those they're gone now. Jesus knew that they were on the road that day. The risen Saviour knew. He, he knew how they felt and what was going on. So he made a point to come alongside them. It wasn't a chance meeting. It was orchestrated by Jesus himself. He found them. And although they didn't recognise him, He was still with them, walking with them. Now, for me, that is enough to keep me hanging on in there, enough to hang on to in the most dark of seasons. That truth that even when we can't see him, even when we are unable to recognise him for whatever reason, he's still with us. He's promised that, that he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's promised us that we'll never have to deal with stuff on our own. And it deals with that age old criticism, you know, the one that says, where is God in the middle of my pain? That maybe we wouldn't utter as good Christians, we wouldn't utter out loud. But sometimes there is there can be a temptation to to allow it to seep into our hearts. Where is God in the middle of my pain? But I want to encourage you this morning that Jesus has found us. And that just because we don't recognise him, it doesn't mean he isn't there. He is our constant, faithful, committed, resurrected, out of disaster saviour who finds us on whatever stage of the road we're on. He's the one who knows everything about the narrative. They assumed he knew nothing when he asked, what are you talking about? They assumed that he didn't know all that had happened in Jerusalem and the disaster that it seemed to them was taking place. He knew everything. The story was about him. They were narrating to him what he already knew. And I just realised how easy it is for me to adopt a similar approach to God where I think when I'm hurting or when I'm struggling or when there are things going on that he somehow doesn't understand and he somehow doesn't know. But the saviour who finds us on our road. It's a saviour who is familiar with all our suffering. Not because he read it in a book, but because he went through it himself. He went through it so that we could identify with him. We knew that we had a God who loves and understands everything. The crux of their issue 
When you read in verse 21 and they're beginning to narrate the story to Jesus about all that's gone on, knowing not knowing who he is. They come to verse 21 when they say to Jesus, we had hoped. We had hoped that this one who has been sentenced and crucified, we'd hoped he was the Messiah that had been promised to us years and years ago. We had hoped he was the one that was going to deliver the people of Israel out of their captivity. We we had hoped he was going to be the answer to age old, century old problems. We had hoped. They'd hoped many things. They had hoped for a better outcome. They'd hoped for a happier ending. They'd hoped for a different saviour. They had hoped for a, a different victory. They'd hoped that they had been better and braver and more courageous and bold. They had hoped everything had been different. The Bible tells us that a hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I know that I'm not just talking to myself this morning. We are all in that category in one way or another. They were without hope, hopeless in their challenge, in their internal struggle, hopeless for their future, hopeless with what comes next. Their journey has been a journey of hopelessness and recounting, reliving, retelling, remembering, revisiting the story of what looks like the disaster that they've left behind. And there comes a point when Jesus stops them. There comes a point on their walk when he says, hey guys, enough now. And he begins to point out the truth, the power of truth. Not my truth as I see things from my perspective or my opinion or my experience and not your truth as you see things from your perspective or experience, but his absolute truth, earth forming, universe creating truth of his word that has stood the test of time. Romans 15, four says, for whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Jesus points them back to the truth of his word, back to the truth of his promises. He says to them, he says, you wombats or, you know, words to that effect. You've known the scriptures. Why are you so slow to believe something that you have known for years? Weren't these things already foretold? Weren't weren't the things that happened to Jesus already told to you beforehand? from Moses and all the prophets and all the scriptures concerning himself, he begins to remind them all that had been said. And that truth begins to build hope in them. I wonder if the reason that sometimes we live so long in a place of hopelessness is because we're not taking hold of word, God's word to us. We are so consumed and so sucked into what we're going through that the word of God, the things he's already promised, the things he's already recounted to us, the things that he's already told us to live on, we kind of put to one side and we're living on our own narrative and our own predictions and we've forgotten to listen to his voice of hope. I know it's true for me. I'm thinking of that song that says, you're the voice of hope, the anchor of my soul. When there seems to be no way, you make things possible. You are the prince of peace amidst adversity. And then it goes to say, my lips shall shout your praise. When you go to the end of this scripture, when they'd finally discover who Jesus is, as they're sitting around the table, you need to go and read the whole passage. But when they finally discover who Jesus is, their testimony is that were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened up the scriptures and reminded us of things that we had known, but we had forgotten. I think sometimes our journey can be about reliving and recounting and remembering But Jesus stopped them at one point. And my encouragement to you this morning and to you and to myself this morning is we need to give him chance to speak. 
into our lives. We need to give him chance to remind us of the things that maybe we already know, but we need to be reminded afresh on. You see, because what happens is after he's poured all this into them, after he's reminded them, after he's he's confirmed his promises and, and reaffirmed his commitment to them and, and, and all of that, what they then do is they then turn around and they go back to the problem and they go back to the situation and suddenly it looks completely different and it looks less like a disaster and it looks more like a victory story. When they gave him chance to speak his word into their lives. I don't know about you, but I find it really easy to stay in my place of hopelessness, particularly if I take time to go over and over and over and over and over and over again in my head and in my declarations. But when we allow Jesus to speak his word, his truth into our lives, changes how we view those very things that have consumed us for such a long time. My prayer for you this morning is that you would hold on to the truth whether you recognize it or see him hold on to the truth that his presence is with you he's walking with you that's his promise to you this morning and i pray that you would take time to stop and just allow god to speak his word of truth into your life changing the course that you're on helping you to see things through his eyes, through his perspective, through his standpoint. And the word that I have this morning is uh, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That's who we are today. And I pray that you'd allow God to speak into your situation and into your life and bring hope. He is the God of hope. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are faithful to us. I thank you that you walk with us, that even when we can't see you, you are there. Help us to hold on to that this morning, this week, in the days ahead. Father, you know every situation and circumstance. You know all that we go through. And I pray that you would help us to stop, to take hold of your word and allow it to feed our spirit, allow it to change our perspective, allow it to change our course, Allow it to smile and to lift the burden of our shoulders, knowing that you are in control. We thank you for your word to us, and we embrace it this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great week. God is with you.